Hey Buns, for today's video, we're gonna be talking about the most WTF minions in Final Fantasy XIV. These are minions that when I tell you about them, you're gonna be like, no way, no way, no way. <laughs> Cause that's how I felt making this video. So I don't know if it's fair to say that these are minions you would want after this, <laughs> but maybe you will, I don't know. Maybe you're kind of crazy like me. You might become a little more afraid of some of the minions that you've already got. Anyway, let's hop in. First up is the Pink Bean. This is the Fall Guys minion from the recent Fall Guys collaboration event that we had at the Gold Saucer. And it says, rumor has it that underneath its rotund exterior is a skeleton that looks like a nightmarish amalgam of man and bird. And there is no ready way to determine the truth. Now, when I told my friends about this, they said, oh yeah, oh yeah, that's accurate. <laughs> that, that's canon and I'm like what are you talking about it's true this actually comes from the time that the Fall Guys devs shared horrific concept art detailing the beans deeply unpleasant skeleton <laughs> so now that you've seen it you can't unsee it this you know maybe we don't need this collab to come back <laughs> next up the giant beaver looks really cute and sweet and innocent, right? But no one knows what, what it really is. Why don't we read about it in the Encyclopedia Eorzea, Volume 3? It's a mysterious being that appeared at Fizor Ren. Whatever may be the truth of its identity, some mysteries in the world are better left unresolved, or so the faint of heart might say. Others, however, would risk life, limb, and more in pursuit of beaver-related revelations. And one such intrepid naturalist has lived to tell the terrifying tale in his memoirs, revealing that the creature... <laughs> and as you can see, the rest of the entry isn't legible because it is soaked in blood. In Ilmec, there is a quest line about these beavers called Beaver's Cry. And through that, you learn that the pixies who encounter the beaver vanish, never to be seen again. I'm not going to spoil the quest line for you, but basically nobody knows what it is or what happens to the people that encounter it. But I mean, based on the, the blood stains on an, the Eorzea entry, I can take a guess. Is it possible that the pixies that encounter it become beavers themselves who are then trying to get you to bring in more pixies to also become, uh, I don't know, I don't know. You need to do the quest line that uh, ends with a quest called And Then There Were None which is an ominous all, and also turn in one dancing wing from the Titania trial to get this little guy. Well, I think when it comes to this beaver, what we really need is some damning evidence. <laughs> Next up is my personal least favorite minion, that being the horrifying and tragic Mangy Mutt, who was a reward from my least favorite event ever, the Yokai Watch event, which might come back at some point, God help us all. Yokai Watch is a Japanese game and anime franchise about how you are not really responsible for the things that happen to you because it's actually the Yokai that make you do it. For example, Tattletale makes you tell all your secrets and cheek squeak makes you fart at least that was my takeaway when i watched it anyway mangy mutt is a dog with a human face yokai and he used to be a human salary man but he got fired from his job when he was depressed so he just started drinking and he was drunk he bumped into a pile of wooden planks that fell on him and a toy poodle merging them into the abomination that you see here and He's upset in his afterlife because nobody treats him like a normal dog, which he would prefer. <laughs> but also, according to some sources, Meiji Mutt is a pervert with his lust for women being uh, the reason for his poor decision making. I have since been told that this yokai is based on the Japanese urban legend of the Jin Men Ken, the human faced dog who skulks around city streets at night. I wish it was as cute as that other human faced dog. But honestly, I wish that we had gotten Cheek Squeak instead. From Highland Exploration or Heaven on High Silver Sacks, you can get the Miniature Minecart. Seems pretty boring until you read that it says over a hundred of these minecarts were sent by Amagina and Son's mineral concern to the orphaned children at Stone's Throw. 
why would a mining company send a hundred mine carts to the orphan children? Um, and they say, oh, it was just a Christmas and birthday and Easter gift. <laughs> and others say perhaps child labor. Child labor is established in Thanalon in the lore. Go to the gold saucer and you'll see a child crying saying, but I don't want to work in the silver mines. And his dad says, it's only for a few moons, kid then my debt will be paid. Next up is the wind-up hobgoblin, which is pretty unsettling because I thought my retainers loved me. But here it says that this was a creature that was haunting my retainers' dreams. And by crafting the minion and gifting it to me, they hoped to pass on the nightmare. <laughs> but all my retainers are bunny boys, so I guess those are nightmares. <laughs> Now I see why they cursed me. Next up is the Posher Otter, a minion that might make you wonder what your mammoths on your island sanctuary are doing in their scheduled time off with all that cash they're making. <laughs> it says that this otter was from the Far East, but was out fishing when his boat sank. And he made his way to the desert island where he was found by Automata on that island and experimented on as a test subject and made to wear steampunk attire with steam powered wings and a little top hat. I really don't like this at all. Uh, I, I don't like my, if that's my mammoths doing that, which I bet it is, they were acting so weird. They're acting really sussy, so I wouldn't put it past them. I'd rather they not do that. <laughs> Next up is Bomb Boko, the Tanuki from Field Exploration Retainer Ventures. Now, what's WTF about this one is not the long description, but the short one that says, summon your Bomb Boko minion, an adorable raccoon dog pup with a big heart and even bigger testicles. <laughs> uh, so if you don't know, this actually comes from Japanese folklore about the Tanuki as seen in this artwork here. According to legend, the Tanuki's magic is stored in the balls. I I'm not even kidding. I I'm th that's, that's true. <laughs> and he can stretch and enlarge it to any size, using it for almost any purpose, like as a parachute or a blanket, maybe a pillow, um, an inflatable device to <laughs> save people, people from drowning. Like There are uh, many depictions of the Tanuki you'll see with a large scrotum. It's considered a good luck charm. This minion is pretty nuts. So I think I'm probably never going to see the heavy hatchling the same way again. Before I thought it was kind of boring minion. But now I don't, I, I can't look at it in the eyes because it says that this chocobo could not have achieved this size on greens alone, regardless of how many hundreds of bushels he ate. So how did he get like that? chicken bones found underneath the chick's bedding suggest he may have a taste for his succulent cousins. It's a canna bird. Like, I, I, I never, I never suspected this. Next up is the morble seedling. So this is pretty disgusting. So just go ahead and prepare yourself. It says that the wealthy old Don merchants and nobles bring these seedlings to banquets so that they can inhale its bad breath and vomit, allowing them to engorge themselves on the feast. <laughs> hey, how do you know if an old on noble likes your food? If they bring out the morble seedling after the first bite. <laughs> Look, I'm never going to see those guys the same way. Like, who's Nanamo? She wouldn't. She wouldn't. She wouldn't. Right? No, she wouldn't. She wouldn't. Not her. Robon probably would. Next up is Jestal or Gestal. I hear people say this different ways all the time. I'm going to stick with Jestal. It's based on the FF6 character Emperor Jestal, who many players felt like looked like a dog. And you can see it. So this running joke became immortalized in FF14 with this actual dog minion called Jestal. With, you know, a little outfit that's similar. But that's not the WTF part. Although the tooltip text is very, very cute. The full flavor text, <laughs> not so much. Despite being found lapping up day-old vomit behind the forgotten night, that's that bar in Ishgard, 
The air of nobility displayed by this pup as he rolled in the filth was proof enough of his royal bloodline. Gross. <laughs> Gross. Next up is Mud Pie. And uh, in the game, they try to act like this is mud. But the way that they talk about the mud in the game is suspiciously poo-poo. Um, this is a minion that drops from the last boss in the dungeon St. Mosien's Arboretum Hard, which is the poo-poo dungeon. And the boss is the poo-poo boss. It's, um, has an ability called Feculent Flood. Okay, Feculent doesn't mean... <sighs> It doesn't mean mud, okay? It's fickle matter, okay? And then there's Royal Flush as well. And he's got, like, you know, this little corn piece on his head, just like the minion. Let me just read how they decided to write this, okay? A thick brown mass of living effluence squeezed forth from one of the horror Tokopchi's many hidden orifices. <laughs> <laughs> Though the squirt stinks of sopping sod, sod, right? One might find themselves pressed to deny the amorphous alluvium is anything but adorable. So, according to the canon, it's mud. It's not poo poo, but it is suspiciously poo poo. And they definitely have a lot of fun pretending that it's kind of poo poo. Next is the legendary Great Serpent of Ronka Minion. And what's WTF about this? is also kind of what makes it so beloved by the community because though its wobbly girth may deceive the eye, that is presumably a mere mark of the serpent's mercy, for its true form would be too terrible for mortal minds to comprehend. All hail the great serpent. Scream. This whole thing is really weird. It's really weird. It's a great serpent, divine and terrible and benevolent and all-seeing and all-knowing, and yet so round and jiggly <laughs> and plump. It is just super weird. In fact, the side quests that created it were written by a new story writer, someone who was brand new, who had their idea rejected a lot of times. Like, apparently, according to Natsuko Ishikawa, the writer who had the idea for Great Serpent of Ronka and this whole crazy quest line we're told no over and over and they kept coming back it was probably for being too weird they were probably just like look this doesn't make any sense this is crazy like what are you doing but they wouldn't give up and now it is hard to believe that without their unhinged persistence we wouldn't have this odd little guy what gamer escape calls one of the defining social icons of the expansion the devs saw how much the players loved him and now he's like a sticker he's in 5.2 they added him um, more great serpents with different little hats and there's a great serpent mount and everything. Ishikawa said of that writer, I decided I wouldn't ask the writer what went through her mind. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I, I know what it, I bet, I bet it was just la -hi. Next up is the Mandragoras. Now I've got to mention these as a set because the relationships between the members of the Mandragoran royal family are dark twisted and bizarre and you would never expect it basically the mandragora queen was thinking about drowning herself because the tomato king who she is married to is just a rotten tomato put it that way and his butler the pumpkin butler actually hated him so much that he ran off to join the continental circus which you might be familiar with if you've done the all saints wake halloween event anyway the mandragora queen didn't give up on life because she fell in love with the eggplant knight and then there's the garlic jester, too, who's like, he wanted to be a knight also, but they wouldn't let him because he's so stinky and he's upset about that. Oh, my God. Look, I made a whole video about this years ago, <laughs> which still checks out if you're interested. But I'm just I wanted to mention this because it is pretty WTF as how deep that rabbit hole goes. If you are a Lollafell with a Goo Boo Sproutling, you might not want to have it out that much because according to the description for it, this beastkin is not a finicky eater and will consume almost anything that cannot outrun them. If rumors are to be believed, this includes Lollafells. <laughs> so you're on the menu uh, for the Goo Boos. Next up, I've got to mention the shoe bill. 
a legendary minion at this point. I could make a whole separate video about this guy. He's become kind of a cult icon ever since Shadowbringers when he started appearing in random places, just sitting there, like staring menacingly like that's it just staring at you kind of like creepily off in the distance like in places it feels like he's not supposed to be like he's following you at one point the game says silent vigilant plotting the shoe bill is still one of the game's biggest unresolved mysteries he first appears in a mini game in Kalusha, and then he shows up in every shadowbringers patch Rain meets him and like lots of the NPCs are commenting on him saying, oh, it's kind of weird. Rain's like, oh, maybe he's lonely and consider it's hidden text, which says love can move shoe bills. Ancient ballad. What does that mean? Is ancient a clue? He's a minion drop from a Shadowbringers dungeon that because of which dungeon it is, has led a lot of people to speculate it's Emmet Selk's familiar or creation or even his like weird bird form. <laughs> My, this is my personal favorite theory. This bird even shows up randomly in your Crystarium in-room and just like watches you fall asleep. <sighs> I have never been so afraid until I encountered this bird in the Crystarium in <laughs> You ever get the feeling you're being watched? Oh, I'm probably just imagining things. The truth is, nobody knows. He appears in places that a normal bird would have an impossible time getting to, like the bottom of the ocean. And as of Endwalker now, Elpis, maybe even more bizarrely, Meteon doesn't recognize him, doesn't, says, I've never seen him before, I don't know who it is. How did he get there? Did he follow you? Like, there's even a shoe bill side quest in Elpis where the researchers are there like, we don't know what this is. We, it just showed up, we don't know what it is. We can't, why is he just staring? <laughs> no one knows. Keep a lookout for him in Dawn Trail. I'm sure he will be creepily staring there too. Have you ever read a really surprising or strange or weird minion description in Final Fantasy XIV? Do you want to get any of the minions that I mentioned today because of what I said? Or do you want to delete any of the minions that you have that I've now told you about? Uh, let me know in the comments section down below. If you like this video and like to see more Final Fantasy XIV content here on the channel, like this video, please consider supporting the channel on Patreon or on Ko-Fi or on Twitch. On Patreon and Ko-Fi, we're now offering early access for videos just like this one, so you can see it a couple of days early. I wanted to give a very special thank you to our Omega Bun supporting at the highest tier. J. Alpez, Anticlockwise, Els, and Pete Wilson. I'm streaming five days a week, sometimes six, on twitch.tv slash ZeppelHQ, so I hope to see you over there. And we started doing some shorts, doing some clips here and there. We've got those coming up here on uh, YouTube Shorts and over on TikTok at ZeppelHQ. So I hope that you'll enjoy those, and I can see you in the next video or on Twitch. See you next time. Thanks for watching, everyone. Bye.